Well, hello there, and welcome to the first radio review for Summits on the Air. And the radio we're going to cover today is the venerable Yesu 817ND. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summits on the air. Okay, so the ACU-817ND was the first portable radio that I bought to do Summits on the Air. Um, and it's one of the very few that I purchased new. All the other radios uh, pretty much purchased used, except one of the ones I built, um, which was purchased from those guys, and we'll get to that. But during uh, this series of videos, this being the first one really, I'm going to be covering a whole bunch of different radios for use on summits on the air and i'm as part of that i'm going to cover things like you know how does it really work for summits on the air from a user perspective i'm not going to go into detail about whether it's a software defined radio and whether it has a cool super head design etc but i'm more focused on using this thing and how well does it work for summits on the air We'll talk about things like weight and size. How many bands does this particular radio that I'm reviewing work on? The different modes that it will do. Um, usability, does it use menus like crazy or are there buttons and knobs that you get to turn? Um, we'll put some, the only tech piece in there really is power utilization. I'll paste that in from the, from the manufacturer. Um, but it's certainly something a consideration for some that's on the air. Not only how much something weighs, since we're typically backpacking to the top of some mountain. Uh, yes, there are some drive ups that we'll do. Um, but size is also a consideration about power utilization. How much battery do you need to take if you're going to do one summit all day or six summits throughout the week? Um, that's a good thing to know. Um, how does this darn thing sound? Uh, what is the filtering capabilities of the radio? And uh, of course, what is the fun factor? Um, which is for me normally out of a scale of one to ten generally it's an 11 so <laughs> um they're a lot of fun to use all the radios that i will review but uh the first one we'll cover is the asu 817 uh, nd it, I, as i said before it's a first radio that i got for doing this um and what i did is i took a dipole that i bought uh, from ham radio outlet uh, down the freeway here Took it up on a small mountain next to my house um, after breaking a different antenna <laughs> and uh, set it up. It was totally wonky and uh, I had no idea what I was doing. And I worked Japan on sideband at five watts. Now, from that point on, I was pretty much hooked. I thought that was totally cool. And the people that kind of walked by and were joking about, hey, maybe that guy's talking to Japan. I really was talking to Japan and it was totally cool. So that's the radio that really got me hooked in the hobby, and um, I've had a great time using it. One of the things I'll mention is it is a shack in the box. So this radio does um, multiple modes, all the bands you'll ever want to use for summits on the air, and maybe even from home. It does HF, VHF, UHF. Um, it's it's extremely rugged. It's reliable. It sounds good. And which you're going to find, you're going to watch here in just a minute. And um, there is a tuner called the Z817, which is a perfect match for this radio. So that if you want to run a random wire, which I have into this radio, it works great. You just push the button and you start yakking. So um, this radio works awesome for sideband as well as CW, which I've used it uh, the most on. And we'll talk more about those modes in a minute. So let's take a little bit closer look at the radio um, at the workbench. Okay, this is more or less a stock uh, 817 with a couple of upgrades. So it's an 817ND um, and just wanted to point out a few things. The um, I've added a couple of side rails here to make it tougher. I've got a little 90 degree um, coax connector on there for two meter. Certainly, I t I, as you s will see, I take this off when I'm up on the mountain. Um, 
The other thing is on the back, I've upgraded so I can just put a Anderson power pole cable right in there. Um, and then you can plug in HF um, antenna back here um, instead of the front. So this is settable so you can set the radio to either use this or use the front connector um, right there. So um, I'll probably use the front given one of my cables is a BNC connector, but it's nice to have both options. Okay, not sure whether you can see this or not, but I brought up the menu that you can change it to front antenna or rear antenna uh, port. So you can use either one. So I'll just leave it set there. <coughs> And then the wizards over at Yesu, um, these little three little buttons down here are you can change what they do, um, but by there's so many menus in here that you have to basically go through here to the ones that you want to use, and uh, then you can use those. The other nice one of the nice features that I do like is there's a very coarse uh, frequency change on the left, and then you can do fine uh, frequency change on the right. Uh, if we unlock that, oh no, well, I have it in a different mode, so maybe not in FM mode. But when you're in HF, uh, you can use this for coarse frequency setting. Let's see if I can change that down. So, as you can see, I can change the frequency in very small steps here, or I can go in a lot more coarse steps here. It's nice if you need to move up and down. That's uh, what they've come up with. One of the ways that I normally leave the menus, uh, certainly when using HF, is whether I'm going, uh, is basically the one that has, um, uh, you have to give me a minute here. So right here is where you turn the filter to narrow or not. Um, you're not gonna hear a whole lot of difference, although you'll hear it when I'm up on the mountaintop, but you just have to have this menu set correctly so that you can use this button to turn that on and off. So um, if it's not set that way, it is not the most convenient uh, way to get in and make setting changes that you're going to use all of the time. Um, that is definitely one of them um, that I use the most and it's generally setting on that. Um, as you can see on the top of the radio, you set the mode and band. That's pretty easy to move up and down. You're gonna use those a lot. I use the lock button on this because you're gonna bump it and get it off tune. Um, and then you have the course button here for frequency changes um, as well. So. There's a lot packed into this little package, um, and so that I got to believe that they did the best they could given the footprint that they had to work with. Um, so a marketing guy probably went to the engineering guys and said, hey, I sold this radio, it's going to look like this. Uh, you need to figure out how to get it to do everything I just told the customer. <laughs> So there you go. I'm sure that's probably uh, was uh, very likely the design process that they used there. Okay, so the last thing that I'll, we'll do here before we head up to the mountain is to uh, put this in memory mode. There is software that comes with it and uh, we're gonna go and change the band here. Okay. And we're gonna put it, we're in two meter memory mode and there's a repeater right by my house here. So we'll just hit the repeater. Um, it's, I call it black one. And there we go. There you go. Um, so now that you've seen this radio, we've taken a look at it. Um, let's go out and use this thing. What, how does this work? Um, what does it look like in the field? How does it work in the field? Um, you're going to find out right now. Okay, well, we've uh, gone over the basics for this radio. Uh, the venerable 817, I had the model 817 ND. Made some little mods along the way, but 817 is basically the same radio. Um, 
So, we're going up to the test range here. I brought an antenna that does 2040. Uh, it's very common to, uh, when these came out, a lot of guys were carrying the uh, LNR trail friendly NFED half wave. So I have one of those, but I also have one that I built that does 2040. So we're gonna run with that today. When I use this radio in the past, I used it a lot with a, um, a dipole, a 2040 link dipole. And it works great with that. Of course, you know, any radio is gonna work great with a dipole. Um, but with this um, antenna tuner, this ATU, it works awesome with a random wire, which I also built from the K6 ARK um, kits. So go check those out, k6ark.com, and uh, pick up one of those kits. You can build all kinds of different antennas with just that one kit. Um, so anyway, we're gonna hit the trail here. We're headed up to that summit there, our little test range, and have the soda dog here ready to go. So let's get up there and uh, get the radio on the air. All right, let's go. Okay, we made it to the top here and I've set up the station. I've got the 817 here. Um, got a little feed line here with a choke on it, uh, made for me, my good friend. And um, what that does, it actually makes this 2040 um, NFED half wave I made work really good. So what I did is I cut it for 40 meters, and then with this uh, little choked feed line, it really tunes up well on 20. So uh, no tuner required for this particular setup. Uh, you can also go with an LNR and fed halfway. There's, there's a lot of opportunities to go without that little mini tuner. Um, that little mini tuner though will tune up the random wire um, that I built. And as you probably know by now, that's my probably my favorite antenna, just cause I'm lazy. I can chase on any band, hit the button and go. But anyway, I digress. So uh, that goes into my little wire here and then up behind me on top of this, almost the top of the mountain there is the pole. So we're gonna work a little sideband today uh, with this guy and um, some CW so you can hear what it sounds like. Um, I don't know if I have all the cables to hook up but we'll probably just record it with, uh, so you can hear what the speaker sounds like. Um, that's probably a good idea. So some speakers sound better than others, but eh, yeah, we'll see. So let's get on the air and uh, see what we can do. Number one, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Okay, I hear someone calling, but you, uh, you gave a call sign so fast, <laughs> I didn't get it. The name here is Ron, Romeo, Oscar, Nancy. I'm in the middle of Park, California, south of San Francisco. Autoflex radio pushing about 700 watts, over. November 1. Charlie Lima Charlie, QSL. Okay, let me put you in QRC and you see if I get a uh, bingo on that, November 1. Uh, and uh, uh, looks the, uh, and uh, CLC. Uh, and uh, what might come up? Uh, is this Christian Claiborne in uh, San Diego? QSL, QSL. Uh, Chris here. And uh, yeah, it's November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie, mountaintop portable right now, uh, down in San Diego. Yeah, well, November 1, you're on the East Coast, so uh, uh, what are you doing in uh, San Diego? I grew up outside of Boston, over. <laughs> QSL, QSL. I, um, uh, it's a vanity call sign, so that's my initials, uh, uh, Chris L. Claiborne, so uh, yeah. Uh, doing good, and I'm just actually testing out a radio here. Um, actually, doing a small series on YouTube regarding various radios for summits on the air. Okay, well, I've, I'm on a Flex 6400 Mary, which is the last radio I'm ever going to buy because it's, the, it's uh, the best there is. Over. 
QSL, QSL. Um, you know, I missed your call sign at the very beginning, if you don't mind. QSL, QSL, I got you a 5.9 here, 5.9 on the mountaintop. Um, you're sounding really good. Uh, awesome radio. Is that Alpha Alpha 7 Oscar Yankee? QSL, I got you a 5.1 as well. 5.1 as well, Dale, but I got you a solid copy. Um, just trying out the 8.17 here on sideband. Roger, roger, man. Thanks for the contact and uh, help me do a little testing out here. N1CLC, Summit's on the air, any station, anywhere. Uh, whiskey Station, Whiskey Station, sending CW. Go again, go again. Okay, Whiskey Uniform 7 Hotel got you a uh, good 535353. He's giving me a 339 with Morse code. <laughs> QSL, QSL, Josh. Hey, this is awesome. I appreciate you working me. Doing a little testing here and doing a video on the uh, Yesu 817 radio. Hey, thanks for working me uh, cross mode too. That was pretty cool. 73, dude. 7 Delta, 7 Delta, go again. I lost you there, Chris. Was that for WW7 Delta? Whiskey, whiskey, 7 Delta. Daryl, hey, I got you at about a 5 3, sir. 5 3. QSL, QSL, QSL. Thanks a lot, Daryl. Appreciate it. All right, we got a few contacts there. Uh, sideband, so we can jump over to uh, CW, see how we can do there. Okay, I don't know um, if you can hear this, but I've got a, um, a mechanical filter, CW filter, installed in this radio. It's pretty cool, you can pick them up still on eBay. I picked mine up pretty cheap. Um, I'll put an example up here. They're probably a lot more now. Uh, they've been going up in price because they are a bit rare. But I'm using the 500 hertz version. And uh, when I kick that baby in, it really sounds nice. So I'm on 14, uh, oops. I gotta change my freak here, 575. And uh, I'll post a spot and let's see how we do. I really like the way this thing sounds. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's got a great little speaker in it. It's just sounding good right now. Um, certainly that side tone sounds nice. Hopefully the audio is coming out okay here. Giving him a 4 2. He's giving me a 2 1 9. <laughs> Jay, go ahead. Thanks, Len. So there's our CW contact. It sounded really good. Even though he was weak, this radio really pulls him out, and I love that. Um, not a whole lot of people out chasing today, and I'm not sure what the solar conditions are. 
Um, I don't think they're the best, but you know, hey, you take what you can get. There's Dale again. I'm gonna give him a 5.5. Five. He's actually almost 5.9. Looking at the screen here. He's giving me a 5.9. 5.59. Five, 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 All right. So there you have it. A couple of uh, CW contacts on 40 excuse me 20 meter so we're going to jump over to 40 here in just a bit and do a little more tests and see how that works okay so <laughs> you can probably hear we've got some horrible qrm right here i don't know where it's coming from um but we're just going to soldier on and see if we can't get through it we're on 7.260 so we're going to run sideband uh and just see if we can't pick up a contact here it's it's 2.30 in the afternoon, pretty much not much local soda going on, but um, we're going to try it anyway and just see what we can do. Let me get a spot out. CQ, 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 this is N1 CLC for summits on the air, any station, anywhere. And the SWR for this antenna is just a tiny bit, a tiny blip in there once in a while. So, you know, it's not one to one, but it's going to be darn close. It's maybe... I bet you it's not even, it's lower than two to one. So it's it's nice match for this antenna. Um, so we should be getting out okay. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is N1CLC, Summit's on the air. Any station, anywhere. Now it's gonna be tough for sideband because we're not putting out a whole lot of power. We're putting out five watts. But as you can tell, we got over to Arizona, up into Oregon, no problemo. Papa Oscar Tango. Uh, got you at about a 5.5, five, Peter, 5.5. Five, five. All right, here's all Chris. Uh, thanks for the activation. A little bit light on this side, about a 4 and 4, 4 and 4 to Northern California. QSL, QSL, Peter, I appreciate it, man. Doing a little testing here of the uh, 5 watts out of an 817 into an NFED half wave. And I've got some horrible QRM here, but uh, you're getting through just fine with about probably at least a 5.5, five, if not more. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Uh, if you're around, pick me up on CW. I'm doing a little testing here with the video, and uh, I'm going to try CW on uh, 40 as well. See if that works a little better for me. All right, my, my mode of choice. <laughs> it seems to cut through the air a little bit better than single sideband. Anyway, 73, have fun today, Chris. Already 73. This is November 1, Charlie Lima Charlie. For some, it's on the air, any station, anywhere. Okay. So hopefully you could hear uh, Peter getting through there just fine. Um, geez, the noise floor here is just horrible. Uh, but, you know, that's what you have to deal with on sideband sometimes. It's a little tougher. That's why CW is going to cut through a little bit better. Um, certainly I've had really good luck at high noise floors on some really noisy summits. We may be getting whacked with a good uh, solar storm, but there's a little bit of activity out there. All right, so there's a narrow filter <laughs> that cuts down some of the noise. We're gonna jump down to CW land here and just see if we can land anybody. Uh, 7.060, should be able to get somebody here. Uh, SWRs are just flat, so uh, let's see what we can do on there. Let me get a spot out. Okay, well, Ran out of battery power, but so far um, you've seen the uh, venerable 817 operate on uh, multiple bands, CW and sideband, and kind of heard what the speaker sounds like. It's kind of one of the things I like about this radio is they put the speaker on top, and it actually sounds pretty good. The other thing that's cool about this radio that we're going to cover here on the mountaintop during our actual use is the fact that it also does two meter and 70 centimeter. That means 
you don't need to carry an HT. So when we get to the stats part of this radio, um, I'm going to mention that again because it, it, although it may weigh more than other options, um, because you don't have to carry an HT, um, we're going to subtract that off a little bit. I'll let you know what, what the HT typically weighs for me. So um, we're going to get on some 2 meter and do a little uh, activating with some that's on the air with that. We're back to the same summit. Um, I ran out of batteries, as I'd mentioned, and uh, so now, uh, since my other battery is dead and wouldn't charge, new batteries. We're up here again, and we're going to finish this demo of the Yaesu 817. So let's check this out and get on the air. And we're on 146.52. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie, for Summits on the Air, any station, anywhere. KN6, Kilo November Echo. Kilo November 6, Kilo November Echo. Good afternoon. Oh, well, good morning still. Actually, we got a few more minutes of morning time. Uh, I got you 5-9 up here on uh, Twin Peaks. Oh, Roger, Roger. Glad to hear. Twin Peaks a little bit far away. 5-9 uh, here. I'm at uh, Catalina Island. Over. Ah, oh, QSL, QSL. Well, that's a good haul. And you're just, you're just killing it in here. Thanks a lot for the contact, man. Oh, Roger, Roger. I think we have... Uh, Almost no obstructions between me and you. Uh, very good. Have a good time up there. Oh, by the way, is it? Uh, you see blue skies. Uh, you're, you're you're above the clouds, right? Uh, negative. We're still kind of socked in here. I think the summit's only around a thousand feet, so uh, it's pretty well overcast. Looks like it's overcast at about uh, maybe three thousand. Oh, okay. Interesting. Gotcha. Uh, we're uh, low overcast here. All right, see you later. Have a good time. This is KN6, KNE, clear. QSL, this is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie, summits on the air. November 6, Delta Romeo Echo. November 6, Delta Romeo Echo. Good morning, sir. I got you 5-9 here up on the summit. Uh, good morning, Chris. Uh, you're 5-9 full quieting here in the University City. QSL, man. Thanks for the contact. Appreciate it. Have an awesome day. You too, 7-3. CQ, CQ, N1, CLC, Summit's on the air, any station, anywhere. What do you think, Ray? You know, if you have a dog next to your radio, you get a couple extra dB. All right, so we got a few contacts on there. Um, <laughs> Ray's keeping a close eye here on our perimeter, checking things out. Dog's like a goat. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it worked great. This is, I love this radio. It's, it's, uh, it's rugged. And the wizards at Yesu make this a complete shack in a box for a mountaintop. It's a lot of fun. Uh, sure, it only puts out five watts, but there are some devices out there you can stick on there and uh, get a little more power out if that's really your thing. So anyway, that concludes the uh, practical test of using this thing on for summits on the air. And uh, well, we're going to move on uh, to some stats and some other stuff. And uh, thanks for joining up here. Okay, you've seen this radio in action, and uh, it works pretty darn good. I've had some great pilots with this radio. Um, I only showed you a few QSOs. It was the whole point of the uh, demonstration wasn't to show you how many how many contacts we could make, um, but just to show you how it sounds, how what the usability looks like uh, when you are on a mountaintop, and uh, of course, it's some sweet uh, two meter action as well, uh, which. By the way, um, you probably won't see from many other radios that I'm going to review. So um, that pretty much wraps up all the practical. Let's go through the stats on this guy. Um, and so for the Yaesu 817ND, um, we're going to look at these particular parameters for all the radios that I review. And uh, so how much does this thing weigh? 2.65 pounds. Um, it's not the lightest, but it's not the heaviest. There's a little star next to that because, as I've said multiple times, because this is a shack in the box, it does HF and 2 meter. You don't need to bring an HT if you want to do 2 meter from a summit, and it does it really well. Um, it's a pretty good size. It's not, it's not the best. Maybe I would give it, um, I gave it an A, maybe I should give it a B. Um, but, you know, it's really pretty much compact for everything that it does. 
all the modes, all the bands. Um, it, it's it's a pretty amazing radio. Um, so the bands, we covered that. I give it an A+. Plus. The modes, um, I give it an A. I don't know, maybe it should have an A+. Plus. Because there's there's not a mode that it doesn't do, except maybe a built-in FT8 or something. Um, we could probably get it to do FT8 with a few few more wires, but I uh, have gotten it to do packet radio with WinLink on email application, as well as a RIDI. So I've made some contacts using that. Um, usability. There's lots of menus. I'm going to give it a B, maybe a C. It's there's a ton of menus in this thing, but you really on a summit, once you have the radio set up and you're on a summit, there's really only a couple things that you change. Um, you may want to get in and change the speed for your CW, which is probably one of the core ones. The other thing is turning on and off the, um, the filter. And by the way, I have installed um, a filter that I got on eBay. Um, here's an example of one. It's a mechanical 500 uh, megahertz filter, which is great for CW because it really, really narrows that bound and, and gives you much better signal to noise ratio. Um, I noticed <laughs> today these things are about as expensive as the entire radio. They're hard to get. I got mine quite a while ago, so I didn't spend nearly this much money to, to upgrade the radio. But it goes in. There's a little spot right for it right there. It goes in super easy. Uh, to install that guy so and it works awesome there is uh, if you do get that there is a setting in the menus that you need to enable uh, to make sure that you can use that that filter if you don't do that then uh, it won't work um, I know a ham operator that can attest to that because <laughs> uh, he did a whole bunch without it um, but again you don't have to have that filter to get a lot of CW contacts um, and as you can see, this radio pegs the fun meter um, at an 11. I, I always had a great time with this thing. I still do. I've taken it out uh, a few times. Uh, there are some other radios that you'll find uh, that I enjoy a lot more. And if you've watched my videos, you probably know which one that is. So that pretty much covers our review of this first radio of a series that I will be doing uh, this year on ham radios for summits on the air so if you enjoyed this thing make sure you hit the like button if you didn't like it um, please hit the like button um, if this was entertaining or not and just hit the like button no matter what you do just hit the like button because it just makes my ego that much bigger and who doesn't want that <laughs> so with that uh, i'll bid you adieu if you're interested in doing summits on the air and you'd like to learn more about it I did a four-part series on activating and chasing for summits on the air. Why do it, um, how to do it, some planning, navigation, etc. Um, I'll probably do a special episode just on navigation. Um, if you don't want to wait for that, head on over to Red Summit RF's channel. And I gave a quick 15-minute presentation about how I do navigation, preparation, and navigation for summits on the air. Um, I did a review of the Anytone 878, and you can look at that URL right here to get out and take a look at my thoughts on using that radio for some that's on the air as well. It's a two meter um, uh, only radio, but it's a, it also does DMR, so it's a great little radio that I use for HTs uh, out in the field, um, which you've probably seen me in the other videos. So with that, um, appreciate you watching to this point. And uh, this, just want to let you know that this was produced by um, me talking into microphones and using three different cameras. So there you go. Hey, thanks for watching and have an awesome day. I did a review of the Yaesu 817. I'm sorry, not the Yaesu 8. <laughs> well, I did a review. This is it. <laughs>
I'm an idiot. Okay, back on track.